Joined here by Scott Sadlin, mm -hmm. UMD's first round bout with Western Michigan here in the NCHC playoffs. Any opening comments, coach? No, we'll get right to it. All yeah. right, we'll go ahead straight to questions then, starting with Matt. Uh, Scott, before talking about the, the NCHC mm -hmm. here, um, the program lost a pretty big uh, part in, mm -hmm. um, part in uh, Pavlich. Um, did you did you know him well? Did you get a chance to, to meet him and interact with him in your in your years here as coach of the Bulldogs? Uh, a little bit. Man, I went fishing with him probably about five years ago um, <clears throat> on Lake Superior. We caught some lake trout, but uh, obviously he was he was a ranger. And I think the first time I ever met him was when I was skating in the summer in Hibbing, and some guy rolled in in sweatpants and a ball cap, and we didn't know who he was until we got a closer look. He had no gear, and he wanted asked if he could skate with us and we found him some gear. He was pretty good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was sad. You know, it, it, it's, uh, he was obviously one of the best players to play here. Obviously had a great, uh, a great career and, you know, certainly with the, the gold medal and his pro career and, you know, love the outdoors and, you know, just a sad day. So, um, you know, it was, it was tough news, but, uh, you know, you know, we move on and remember him. Back to Matt. Scott, as as an Iron Ranger, you know, before you even got to the Bulldogs and everything, Mark being a part of that 1980 championship team, what did he mean to you guys up there? Well, a lot. I mean, it's you know, I mean, obviously, I wasn't <clears throat> around when he when he played, but it's <clears throat> it's kind of funny to hear all the stories of uh, you know whether I think there was a presidential thing here that he got stopped because he came in his hunting gear and had a shotgun with him and. Secret Service stopped him. So you hear all those stories, but you know, I mean, Mark was just, a, you know, he was a fun player to watch. I mean, I remember coming to games and, and watching him, but you know, like I said, that day when I got the, the he joined us uh, back in, I can't remember it was when I was in high school or just early college summer skating and just watching him play the game was, was pretty, pretty amazing. You know, I mean, he was wearing skates that were a size too big. He had no, like none of his own gear, but still the best player on the rink. And obviously we weren't, as talented as him, but uh, it was, you know, it was fun to, you know, to, to remember some of those things. And like I said, the guys that played with them probably remember a lot more, but I really enjoyed the day of fishing. And, uh, you know, we had talked about doing some other, the other days, he was a big, you know, big outdoorsman and loved his salmon fishing. And I always <clears throat> kept bugging him about trying to take me when the salmon are running and we never got around to that. But, uh, like I said, it's just, just sad. And, um, but you know, he had a, you know, lasting, lasting memory here with what he did here. And, and certainly, uh, you know, it was, it was nice. Uh, I thought St. Cloud did a great thing last, you know, they honored him uh, before our game and with a moment of silence. And that was pretty cool. I thought, uh, that they, that they did that. Back to Matt. Scott, looking at the the frozen face off here, your your thoughts on uh, on the format this year of going to a, a single elimination tournament mm -hmm. and um, for your team possibly having to play three games in in four days to to win it all. Well, I mean, whoever's 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 playing has got to win three games, right? If you want to win the whole thing, so um, you know, again, it's it, it's kind of goes along with with the whole year. I mean, obviously, I think there was a lot of discussion on what we should do. I mean, there was certainly you know, people talking about the best of three and, you know, uh, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different situations and variations of what we should do, but, you know, it, it's fine. I mean, you know what, we're all going to one spot and it should be a hell of a tournament and, you know, uh, like it always is. And, you know, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta win games. I mean, it's, 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 it's a good thing. I, I think, uh, you know, when you get into these, the, these single games, it's no different than if you advance, right? You know, you're in the single games and it's it's kind of do or die. So um, it feels like we've been playing that for the last three games, right? We've had single games here for the last three weeks. So we're already kind of in that mode, but uh, no, it'll be fun. I mean, it's something different. And uh, again, you got to put your, your best foot forward here and everybody has a chance. Go to Sam. Scott, the four games that you played against Western just polar opposite basically the series over there in the series here in Duluth was was there any real was the biggest difference the rink or was there something else that caused it to be just a completely a shift 
in the, in the results in both. I don't think it was that much different. I mean, obviously we, we took advantage. I mean, you know, in that series here, we were four for 10 on the power play. Right. And so, and I think they were one for seven and, and when we played there, they were three for six and we were zero for seven. So uh, again, a lot of it was special teams. I mean, I think, uh, I think Andy said that when they left here that they took way too many penalties and, you know, they cut down on the penalties. I thought they played strong defensively and, you know, they're a tough team. They're a tough team always. And, and you know, they're a team that's been getting better and better and better since uh, they, they left the pod. And part of that's been their goaltending's given them some, some stability there with, with uh, the freshmen that came in and played, but you know, they've got a good team. I mean, it's not like they were picked to finish on the bottom of the league. Uh, they play hard. Uh, they, they're always a tough game. Um, you know, they, they don't give you a lot of room. They've got some talented forwards. You know, Ethan Frank is one of the fastest guys in the league, had a great year. And, you know, look at Ronnie Adder on, on the back end, first team, first team in our league. I mean, he had a tremendous year. I think led their team in scoring, led all defensemen in scoring. He's an offensive threat. He's kind of like, he's kind of like our Pruny was last year, right? In a bigger version, you know, he's involved in the offense. Uh, he can defend, but no, it was just, you know, they, they played good, you know, and for us, uh, we didn't take care of pucks well enough. Our compete level needed to be a little bit higher, but when you watch, when I go back and watch the games, you know, nothing was going on. Both teams, it was pretty tight. And, and uh, once they got a, a power play goal, then, you know, we kind of, we went the other way. And uh, it really, that was kind of the difference. Um, you know, those, those guys scoring on the power play and us not. And, you know, again, you get momentum from that. You chase the game and they're a tough team to chase a game against just like anybody. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to playing them again because we know it's going to be a, a hard fought battle. And, We'll see what comes out on top. Go to Greg. Hi, Coach. Uh, appreciate the time today. And mm -hmm. uh, I was a couple minutes late, so I apologize if this was asked. But mm -hmm. uh, roughly half of everyone skating in Grand Forks uh, next week is going to be playing their first playoff game because the sophomores didn't get that last year as freshmen. Mm -hmm. Is there mm – -hmm. uh, do you think there's going to be a difference in the hockey played at all? Or uh, do you think it's going to be similar to how the regular season and the pod went? I think it'll be similar. I mean, you know, I, I, there's no, there's no question. I think it'll be similar. I mean, I think the, the stakes obviously are higher. I mean, the intensity always goes up when you start playing in the playoffs, just like in any league. And, and it's no different uh, for our guys. I mean, certainly when now you're, you know, you're in a single game eliminations, there's probably going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of the, you know, the nerves too. And, you know, you got to, you gotta, you gotta work, gotta work through some of those things. And the, and the guys that didn't play, you know, uh, you know, getting their first taste of, of playoff hockey, uh, you know, they're excited about that. I've talked to a couple of them on our team, you know, like Luke Lloyd, he's like, yeah, hey, we didn't get to do this last year. So they're excited about that. But I don't think, I think if anything, you know, the intensity levels are going to go up and, and uh, everyone's playing for, you know, a, a shot to, to get the automatic bid, you know, and that's to win three games there. So um, I just think the hockey this year in our league has been, I think it's been tremendous given the fact and the circumstances it started in the pod. I think the players have, have played with a lot of emotion considering there's not a lot of emotion in the building and then the intensity of the games for me hasn't waned at all. Um, and I think uh, that's a credit to all the players in our league and certainly you know, uh, those guys going in and, and, and battling every week and, and every game um, and really kind of blocking some of that stuff out. As a quick follow-up, how are some of your uh, seniors and your leadership group handling the that dynamic with the freshmen and sophomores playing their first team in the playoffs? Uh, well, I, I mean, I hope they're, they're the guys in there. I mean, we haven't, you know, we met as a, as, as a group, uh, couple of weeks ago, you know, and, and just talked about the importance of their leadership and their experience uh, as we come down the stretch and, and know that they've been through a lot of these things and, you know, they've been through stretches too, even when things don't go your way. So um, I like, I like those, the fact that those guys have that experience and I think they'll, they'll continue to share that with those guys, but um, we'll see, you know, we'll see when we get to it and when we get in the game and, Hopefully we can have that, that same mentality that you're never too high or too low during a game and you stay with the game for, for 60 minutes. And a pretty good example of that was, was last uh, Saturday against St. Cloud, right? You know, we're down three, nothing and we stayed with the game and clawed back in and just unfortunate to lose in overtime. But uh, those are things you have to do uh, at this time of the year. And 
hopefully throughout the year, you'll learn some lessons on, on how to do that. But I think our older guys will be good for our guys and they'll, they'll keep our guys calm and, and, and focused in the right direction. Go back to Matt. Scott, what from these last two games against St. Cloud uh, have you liked and <clears throat> maybe uh, tells you that this team is ready uh, for the postseason and to make a run? Uh, well, I think I've, obviously I think, uh, you know, the, the, the two games, especially the one here, I thought we, you know, we had a good start to the game and, and we got the first goal and, you know, they were both different games, obviously, because they did the same thing to us, but, you know, you know, I thought we, you know, in the first game too, we got up three, nothing, they made it three to one. I thought we responded quickly with a goal to make it four to one and keep that lead and, and, and kind of keep that distance and, you know, in the second game, obviously, I liked our, our never quit. I thought we showed good resiliency because, uh, you know, you get down three nothing. You don't know which way it's going to go. And I think that told me a little bit more about our team that, you know what, uh, we do we do have the guys that uh, that understand. And so, though, like I said, like we, we took a lesson out of Saturday's game for sure. I said, you know, we, you, know you stay with games, but you got to start on time. And, you know, doesn't mean you can – start the game well and not be down. It's just, you know, we just got to learn to, you know, if you get down three, nothing, you know, you're not always going to come back, but we showed that we could, but it's a tough, it's a tough, tough road to go. I mean, I'm just uh, playing catch up hockey uh, against teams at this time of the year is, uh, is something you don't want to do a lot of. I mean, you, you might trail one, nothing or two, nothing. You start getting down three, uh, it makes it tough to climb back in, but I was proud of our guys for doing it. They came back and, and showed, like I said, a lot of resiliency and a stay with the game mentality. And, you know, we certainly had some opportunities to, to, to not let that game get to overtime, but, you know, credit St. Cloud, they made a great play, you know, Brodzinski you know, scored the game winner early into overtime. And, you know, but I left the rink feeling a little bit better than last time I left the rink there. Um, so we did some good things. Uh, obviously, we got to get our special teams going, and uh, I like the fact we're, we've scored some goals uh, after not scoring a little bit. We got some different guys scoring. You know, I'll take eight goals in four games, and you know, move forward with that. But uh, you know, I think defensively too, uh, we've been a pretty good team, and so I think to me, a lot of it's special teams right now, Matt. We gotta we gotta get those guys uh, gotta get those guys going and get them uh, you know doing their jobs. Go to Sam. Scott, um, I mean, we've been talking for the last month or so of how well Nick Sweeney has played, but his first team honors all NCHC. Just what, what more can you say about his play and how important his play is going to be if you guys are going to be successful in the next month or so? Yeah, it's not just his play, Sam. His leadership has been really, really outstanding for us this year. I mean, he's, you know, He's really, he's really been a good vocal guy for us. I think he's been a, a calming presence. Uh, he's been great with the younger players, um, but he's had a great year. And, you know, you've heard me talk about it and um, definitely great to see him get that recognition and, and get that, you know, first team because he's certainly deserving of it. Um, obviously, we got a lot of great players in our league, so it's a big honor and, um, you know, but he's certainly does you know, well-deserved to, to, to be on that team, but he, he means a lot to our team. There's no question. And, you know, even, even last Saturday, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't get a goal. He didn't get a point, you know, but he was still uh, a good leader for us. And that's, uh, that's really important. And certainly when you get into to this time of the year and, and, you know, playoffs, you, you need those guys to be the calming influence. You need the guys to set the example. You need the guys, you know, to be, the voice in that room to, to make sure everyone is focused on what we need to do. And he's done that all year. So uh, I don't expect him to be any different here moving forward. Go back to Matt. Scott, at the beginning of the season, prior to the pod in Omaha, we, we talked a lot about the, the strategy of playing such a mm -hmm. condensed schedule. Do you, is there anything similar to that going here into Grand Forks? How, how do you attack these? three games hell no no it's go time man you got to go you can't worry about it you got to win the games you know you do whatever you can to win the games you know if you got to shorten the bench if you got to play certain guys uh you know more or less whatever whatever it takes you know what it doesn't matter because you can't hope that you have another day and you got to have that mentality and you know what there's a day off in between you know what there, there's time to rest you know it's not 
it's not uh, like it was early in the year. I mean, these guys have played, they're in better shape, they're in better condition uh, than starting the year where you haven't played in two months, takes a while to get in shape. Uh, and you know, when we went through that in the pod, it was, it, it took its toll, just like it did on a lot of teams in there. Cause you know, the hockey got better and it was a grind and, but you know, guys are in a better mindset now. Um, and, and as a, and as a group, it's, it's, you gotta go. I mean, you gotta do whatever you can to, with your bench and with, with game management to win a hockey game. Go back to Matt. This uh, format bring back any memories to uh, like in 2009 when you guys had to win three games in three days at the final five? Mm. Uh, probably a little bit. Um, you know, something that nobody said, you know, no, nobody had done before. So, you know, it's kind of use the mentality that again, one at a time, why not, why not let it be us and, and our guys, uh, obviously we got great goaltending that year from Al and beat three pretty good teams in Minnesota, North Dakota and Denver. So um, yeah, a little bit, you know, and obviously we sure were some guys around that remembered that, but uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, anytime you play teams in our league, I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, they're tough games and, and you know, the stakes are higher. So the intensity and in, in the game and everything elevates. So you've got to be ready for that. And like I said, it's uh, it, it's a game where you don't have to be perfect for 60 minutes. You just got to make sure you, you stay with the game and, and do, you know, enough things to win the game. Back to Matt. Scott, a couple of weeks ago, you said the team was in a, in a tough spot in terms of, uh, you know, making the NCAA tournament, what needs to be done. Do you think you guys have improved your chances or still in that same spot? I'm not even really worried about it, Matt. You know what? We, we got to win game. We got to win the game in front of us. Like we're going to win, the, we're going to win and defend our, our, our playoff championship. That's what we're doing. So we've got a tough Western team uh, that we know is going to pose a great challenge. And you know what? If you win that one, you're going to play somebody else really good. So uh, right now, we just got to take it one game at a time, and not you can't start thinking too far ahead um, in any of these situations. So uh, I hope our guys aren't. And I hope they're not reading press clippings and Twitter and all that stuff and and thinking that uh, if we do, then that's our fault. You know what? We got to we got the game at hand, and it's playoffs. And you know what? We've got to we've got to go out and play a good game to to beat a good team. All right, do we have any final questions here for Coach? Awesome. Thank you for your time. Yep, thanks. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thanks, guys. Joined here by Matt Anderson prior to UMD's first-round matchup with Western Michigan. Uh, we'll go straight to questions here, starting with Matt. Matty, you and your classmates have been through uh, almost everything now in, in, in your career in terms of the, the postseason. Um, but this is this is something uh, uh, new for you guys playing a a one and done um, conference tournament, three games in four days. If you guys run the table here, J just your thoughts on on this format and and what's ahead and 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 how you tackle this. Um, I mean, I don't mind it. I mean, uh, it's uh, with the one and done and stuff. It's uh, definitely difficult, but you know, you just kind of gotta focus on um, focus on the first game. Uh, and just kind of worry about the rest after that, I would say. So, yeah, just get that first win and then and then worry about the next one. So a similar approach how you guys would would normal tack, normally tackle going into a um, frozen face-off regional or frozen four, right? For sure. I mean, it's pretty similar. The past years, obviously, we don't have the, the three games on the first round, but it's uh, very similar to what we normally do at, just down at St. Paul. Go to Greg. Hey, Matt, thank you for the time today. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to know from you uh, as a senior what the uh, leadership and the upperclassmen uh, have all been like going into this week because not only have your freshmen not experienced the postseason before, but your sophomores haven't either. Is that a uh, – not difficult, but is that a, is that a new wrinkle that uh, you guys are balancing in the locker room? Um, I don't think it's – yeah, it's not really a wrinkle. I would say it's something that uh, we're excited about. It's uh, our juniors and seniors have obviously been able to ex experience a lot with uh, winning championships. And uh, it's just kind of exciting to um, be able to show them what it's like and for them to get those new experiences of playing playoff hockey. Back to Matt. Matt, how tough is that to, to communicate all these experiences, especially that, 
you and Louie and, and, and Swain's and, and the Kobe's uh, have had from, you know, the disappointment of, of losing two games in the frozen phase off that first year and everything you guys went through there to um, the next year, you know, running the table is like you did. How tough is it to communicate that just to, to, to your younger teammates? Is there like anything you can do to show them in, in practice? Cause I'm guessing words just don't do any of it justice. Sure. I mean, uh, it's hard to, yeah, like you said, put it into words. It's something you more have to experience. But I mean, I think even the younger guys, uh, we've all won hockey games before. We've all won big hockey games before. So uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's just, it's just a new, it's a new atmosphere. Um, but it's one of those things where every, all, everyone on the team has won big hockey games before and they know what they need to do. All right, we'll go to Chelsea. Um, with this last series with St. Cloud, obviously you guys were able to jump out to a quick start for game one. And in the second game, you guys battled back. Um, but to see kind of that grit, kind of that battle back from your team, is that a good feeling? Obviously also seeing goals on the board now too? Um, yeah, obviously um, I think we're a team that likes to get out quick and get that first goal and not have to chase games. But it was definitely cool to uh, see that we had that uh, had that kind of battle back mentality and that we were able to do that even though we didn't get the outcome in overtime. Go to Matt. Matt, how difficult, I, I guess you guys didn't have an experience a lot. Uh, you guys built that reputation for the 2-1 uh, wins in those uh, national championship runs. But, um, you know, I guess the, the Manc I think of that Mankato game and uh, Sioux Falls, you guys had to battle back I guess how difficult how much more difficult is that to do in the postseason than say what you did on on Saturday in St. Cloud um yeah for sure I mean uh Saturday we definitely kind of had that playoff mentality so it was a big game to that we all wanted to win but it's definitely hard and harder in the postseason I mean everyone wants to win teams are gonna they're gonna come with their best so uh it's just one of those things where you just kind of have to stick to the process play know your role play your role and just uh just work it as hard as you can and then hopefully you get that you get it back but it's one of those things like I said where we obviously don't like to um battle back in games if we don't have to it's better off to get the first one or two goals but um it's cool to see that we have that in us so back to Matt Maddie, what stood out to you about this uh, Western Michigan team that you'll see on Saturday? Uh, what stood out to you about them this year? And and are they a, a different team in Kalamazoo than uh, when you see them elsewhere? Um, I think they definitely are. I mean, their rink is. A, I mean, it's all, it's definitely harder to play in when they have when they have their fans there. But uh, it's, it's still uh, it's a hard barn to go to and play in and. Uh, nevertheless, though, they're a really hardworking team. I mean, they, they're they good with their sticks. They work hard. So we just got to expect that pressure and uh, and just battle through it and, and just match their uh, battle level. And, and then the outcome will be what it'll be. Any final questions here for Matt? Awesome. Thanks for your time, Matt. Yeah, thank you, guys. Joined here by Noah Cates prior to UMD's first round matchup with Western Michigan. Uh, we will go straight to questions, starting with Matt. Now, uh, what stood out to you about uh, this Western Michigan team, and and what was it they were able to do the the second time besides just maybe take advantage of of their rink uh, to get those two wins over you guys? Yeah, they're a fast team, heavy team. Uh, they play north and uh, they play quick, so uh, we just kind of kind of try to uh, counter that and kind of play our game uh, down low and kind of hold pucks, possess pucks, but. Uh, they're obviously pretty tough to play in that barn, but uh, if we kind of do kind of the right things, uh, play in their zone, kind of make them play defense, uh, we should be all right. Go to Chelsea. Going back to the St. Cloud series, um, what did you like about your team's effort, obviously getting the quick start in game one and then battling back in game two? It seems like everyone is already in that kind of playoff hockey mentality. Yeah, for sure. It was nice uh, kind of playing with the lead the first night. Uh, kind of took control of that game. And then uh, obviously this past Saturday kind of coming back and uh, not being out of that game was huge for kind of our morale and uh, kind of what we did early in the bubble. We had some comebacks and we were never out of games. So uh, it's big to get back to that and kind of never be out of games and uh, be able to battle back from a couple of goals and uh, just kind of have that have that uh, swagger, 
kind of knowing we're never out of games and we can score a few goals uh, quickly and kind of have that mindset. Go back to Matt. No, obviously your team has a lot of guys with playoff experience, a lot of guys that have won two national championships, but you also have a large group of, of players that, you know, haven't been through this before the freshmen and sophomores. I'm wondering if you can take us back to your freshman year, anything that, that, um, well now senior class or, or some of those guys moved on, but anything that group really, um, pointed out and, and told you about that year that, um, maybe at the time you didn't expect going into the playoffs, but really resonated. Um, they didn't say too much. It was kind of just how they how they acted, their demeanor. Um, you knew it was a big game, but uh, we kind of had the same mentality all year. Uh, maybe just a little more, a little more focus, a little more uh, on the line. But uh, it's just kind of the the demeanor and the attitude of the group. The older guys have to be bought in, but kind of still loose, having fun. It's just another game. But uh, we've we've won these big games. We kind of got to show that and uh, kind of show what it takes to win win big hockey games coming coming down the stretch. Go to Greg. <clears throat> hey, Noah, uh, thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, Coach earlier talked with us about starting on time and uh, how important that's going to be going into this uh, new, different single elimination style uh, frozen face off. How much has that been brought up in the locker room? Yeah, um, obviously, kind of the second half of the regular season, we've uh, kind of gotten bit by not playing a full 60 minutes or not starting on time. So, uh, playoffs is when you kind of got to take all the lessons you've learned throughout the year and uh, apply it to every game because it's one and done now. So uh, it's kind of the message I've been sending lately is uh, we've learned a ton of lessons throughout the year, good and bad. And now's the time of year to put it all on the ice. Go to Matt. Noah, what do you think of this different playoff format this year of, uh, you know, for you guys having to, to possibly win three games and, in four days, uh, you know, a complete single elimination tournament. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, it's going to be fun having a few more fans playing at the Ralph again. So uh, we're all excited for it and, and ready for the challenge for sure. We know if Jade Miller is going to be in the stands for you guys at all. You <laughs> check in with him. Hope so. All right. Do we have any final questions here for Noah? Awesome. Thank you for your time, Noah. Thank you. Thank you.